Hello and welcome into the 3D. Today you are going to learn how to create spoon in Autodesk Maya. First, we are going to create a sphere and to do that, you can go under the polymodeling tab and click on the sphere icon. Or you can go under create, polygon primitives and select the sphere. We have created a sphere and by pressing F, you can focus on the selected object in your scene. Now I want to snap the bottom of my object to the grid and since all the values are set to default value 1 and if we move the object one unit in the y-axis it will snap the bottom to the grid. For the next step select the object, hold right click and select the face mode. In this mode Select this face here, and while holding shift, you will see our cursor has changed. It means if we double click to the face next to the selected one, it will select all the faces in that row. Hit delete and you will see that we have opened a gap between the top and the bottom part. Double click one of the faces on the top and it will select all the top faces but not the ones on the bottom because this part doesn't have any connections with the top anymore. Hit delete again and just leave the bottom part. Now if you go to object mode again, press W to select the move tool and you will see that our object's pivot point currently set to its default position. It means when I move the object it will move from here or if I scale the object it will scale it from this position and this is not what we need. We need to scale the object from the bottom point and to do that first select the move tool, press D on your keyboard and you will see that the shape of the pivot point has changed and it means now we are able to move the pivot point without moving the object. Now we want to snap this pivot point to the bottom point of the object and to do that you can click on this icon and it enables to snap the point option or you can hold the V on your keyboard and you will see that every time I click the V key on my keyboard it enables the snap the point option and disable it as soon as I release the button. So while holding V on my keyboard I will move the pivot point to this point on the bottom and when you are happy with the position of the pivot point, press W and you will see that our pivot point set to the bottom of this object. Now press R on your keyboard and scale the object on the Y axis. Something around 0.8 and on the X axis set it to 1.4. As a result, you should have a shape like this. Great! For the next step, right click on the object and go to the edge mode. Select this and this edge by holding shift. Then hold shift and right click and select the extrude edge option. Now press W and select the move tool. We will move this extruded edge on the X axis, but we will do it by using snap to grid option. You can enable it from up here, but I will do it by holding X on my keyboard. I am holding X to enable it and I move the edge something around 4 units on the X axis. Then while holding X again, I will move the edges on the y-axis to snap them to the grid. Now we know that these two points have exact same height. After this step, we need three cuts on the handle. To do that, you can go and select the multi-cut tool from up here, or you can go under the mesh tools and select the multi-cut tool. If you hold Ctrl key on your keyboard, you can select which part you want to cut or if you hold Ctrl and Shift at the same time it will start snapping it by percentage. 
50% means this is the middle of the object, so we need one cut here. Again, by holding Ctrl and Shift, we will cut it from the top and we will do the same thing for the bottom. Great! After this step, go to the object mode, hold Shift and right click, select the extrude option and change thickness something around minus 0.05. If you want to make it thicker or thinner, you can play around and make it any size that you like. Deselect the object and you will see that our object turned into black color and this is because we extruded in minus units. That means we have reversed all the faces so to fix that, we need to reverse them again. Select the object. Go under Mesh Display and click Reverse. Now the problem is solved. We got the overall shape of the spoon, but currently we are seeing this object in the rough view, which is number one key on your keyboard. And if you want to see it in the smooth view, you can press 3 on your keyboard and it will show how it will look like when we smooth the object. If you want to go back, you can click 1 again and it will enable the rough view. Now hold shift and right click and select the edge mode. Double click this edge and it should select all the edges in that row. Go to the smooth view by pressing 3 on your keyboard. Then by pressing R, select the scale tool and scale the edges in a bit. When you are happy, press W, get the move tool and move it up a bit. Something around this. Let's do the same thing for the middle edges. Select them and scale them in a bit. Maybe something around this. Then get the move tool and move them down a bit. Already looks great. But you can go one step further and add one more edge to this part. Get your multi cut tool again. Hold Ctrl and Shift at the same time and make a cut to the middle of this. Now you will see that it cut all the way around the object. If you press 3 on your keyboard, you will see the smooth view of what we have created and I think we did a great job. So if you are happy with the result, select the object go under modify, freeze the transformations, then go under edit, delete by type and delete the history of the object. This is really important. Finally, you can rename the object. I will rename it as spoon mesh and now go and practice what you have learned today. If you want to see more modeling tutorials on this channel, comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thanks for watching, I see you guys next time.